Member Simons. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Chair of the Standing Senate Committee on Transportation and Communication. Uh, Senator Hisakis, on Wednesday, October 5th, our committee heard from the witness Blair Haggard, a professor at Brock University. You, in fact, praised his testimony. You said if you had professors more like him, maybe you'd have stayed in university. But this Saturday, Dr. Haggard received a surprising email signed by you. It says, hello, Blaine. Right now, the Trudeau liberals are dangerously close to being able to control what you see and say online. It continues that Bill C-11 is online censorship pure and simple, and that in bold print, Canadians have a right to freedom of expression online. They should not be censored by government gatekeepers. But I'm just wondering, uh, you sent this to a, a witness we just heard from who spoke in support of the bill. Presumably future witnesses may have received a similar letter. And I'm wondering if future witnesses, never mind past ones, are going to feel safe and welcome to speak to our committee freely, knowing that you as committee chair are sending out what might be politely called hyperbolic letters attacking the bill while you yourself are chairing the hearings. Yeah, Senator Hosakis. Uh, Senator Simons, firstly, I, what I said at the committee was that I found the testimony interesting. I didn't say I agree with it. Second of all, uh, I think you're talking about an, e uh, an email that went out to uh, stakeholders and party membership uh, of the Conservative Party of Canada asking him to sign a petition. I don't know how the gentleman would have gotten on that particular list, but we, he's probably a member of the party. That's how he got on the list. Uh, so, at the end of the day, when you have 680,000 members, which the Conservative Party of Canada currently has, which is wow. a historic number, the largest number of any political party in the wow. history of the country, obviously liberal, we though. communicate with a lot of people. It's called democracy. Yep. And of course, when they receive these emails, they have the right to sign on if they agree with the content. They have the right to uh, do whatever they think is appropriate. It's called, again, democracy. So. I don't think I have anything to uh, apologize for, and I think this is common practice in public discourse to be able to communicate with people either position and your point of views. Good. Senator Sarr, supplementary. Good yes, I mean, it, it is curious, as somebody who is charged with the task of chairing the hearings that you should do this, you have heard the same witnesses I have, Senator Hisakis, and to the best of my recollection, not one of them has described C-11 in the terms you did in your letter to Mr. Haggart. And I'm wondering, where do you see in the text of the bill anything that would control what Canadians say online or censor their free speech? Senator Hosakis. For starters, there's section four of the bill, which is very concerning to me, as it has been of concern to you. But ultimately, when you have the chair of the CRTC that comes before our committee and publicly states that this bill doesn't take away from him the right to force platform providers to push algorithms towards a particular direction, that in itself as far as I'm concerned, controls what people see, what people uh, get to post. And at the end of the day, I think there's many witnesses that have come before the committee very concerned about how algorithms are being used, both by, in terms of platform providers and in the future, because this bill hasn't been clear when it comes to these particular issues. So if you're telling me that this, these concerns have not been addressed at our committee, I disagree. I've heard from a number of uh, stakeholders and witnesses address those concerns. And I will continue to fight those concerns if I'm a regular member of the committee, a chair of the committee, or if you're a part of this chamber in, in a le leadership position, nothing takes away from us the right to express ourselves on That's a great. particular issue. And I will continue to do so. Here, here. Senator Dupuy. Senator Dupuy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is also for the chair of the Transportation and Communications Committee. It's a bit more general in nature than that of Senator Simons, but concerns the same message signed by the Honourable Senator Housakis, yourself, that is. My question is this. Where do you trace the line between your responsibilities as the chair of the Transportation and Communications Committee, currently studying a bill, C-11, in fact, and your responsibility you, and, and in that facility, you have to ensure that the debates uh, are carried out properly at the committee, and your role as a senator saying stop Bill C-11 in the Senate. 
Could you just please explain to us where that, uh, where you tr trace the line? Answer, Senator Husakis. Thank you. It's very clear there are a few nuances between here and the between the House of Commons and this chamber. The speaker here is not a mediator in this chamber. I don't know if some of you don't know that, but the speaker has the right to express his opinion on various political issues, and a committee chair has the same right privilege and responsibility. A chair has the right, a senatorial committee chair has the right to vote, express an opinion, and even be against a bill. This is not new. This has been the way things happen for years now. If we plan to change this rule and this procedure, tell me. Otherwise, I am respecting this tradition and the law and the rule that exists here, has existed here for a long time. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Actually, the response you've given to my question, well, thank you, first of all, for clarifying senators, including myself. But my question for you is where do you draw the line? And I'm very aware of the fact that the chairs could have their opinions on a bill. That's not my question. My question is, where do you draw the line between your responsibilities? Because a chair, me, member of a committee, I don't have the same responsibilities as a chair of a committee. So, as the person who is responsible for maintaining the serenity of debates, requires some neutrality, some openness, being open to what we like and what we don't like, where do you draw the line between those responsibilities as a chair to maintain serenity of the debate? It's not complicated. A chair has a job according to the procedures and rules, and I'm there as chair to apply the rules to make sure that there is fair functioning from the very beginning that the committee has worked well, has operated in an independent and transparent manner, and we shall continue to do that. But you cannot prevent a chair to take a position on a bill. It's never been like that. The problem that I see personally is that there are people are objecting to my position on the bill, not on the way I work as chair of the committee. So what way? If the work is well done, it's all about respecting the procedures and the rules. And on the other hand, I have the obligation to express myself on any bill, just like any chair of any committee in this institution.